Okay, well, what I'm doing now is a little bit different than what I usually do with the, uh, let me do this, I'm going to put this up on the window, Jesus Christ, I usually do this at night time, I'm going to do this during the day, how about that, put a block up box up there to block out the sunlight because I know it's interfering with the video. Um, I'm going to do a little tutorial on plaster bandage mother molding. Uh, basically you just want to get some water. Clean water probably in a bucket. Okay. You don't need a lot. A little bit. And I've got a whole case of these. These are medical grade bandages. Um, these are the ones that they wrap your arms in when you break your arms. So what you want to do is you have your entire roll of bandages here. You want to take out about, so we're going to do this thing, oh, measure it out, and do two, maybe three layers like this. You can do long strips. You can do a single long strip if you want and just do the whole thing over the top. Uh, but it's best to double it up and I don't want to use an excessive amount of bandages. So what I'm going to do, this is just me and like I said, this is just the way I do it. So anybody ever tells you, oh, that's the wrong way to do it, we'll find out. Okay? So I double them up. Um... Take a pair of scissors, I'll do this, take a pair of scissors, cut them, sometimes you tear, but it's easy to cut. Then what you do, take the bandage, double it up like this, dip it in the water, wring it out, don't really wring it out, but lightly run your fingers over it, because you don't want that plaster mold or plaster to fall out of there. Just take it, lay it on the top. Um, you really want to do from the top down. And I try to make a perfect seam line here. Now this is an alternative to UltraCal, which is heavy. Uh, by the way, this is the same stuff that I use to back my UltraCal molds with. When I'm doing the the uh, latex ones, like for the body parts or the uh, these guys. These pieces are backed with a layer of bandages. These flat pieces, they're backed with a layer of bandages. And if you guys remember the tutorial, yes, we did go over that and do that. Um, I'll lay that down with them break. Now the thing is, when you get this down in here, you really just want to smooth it out. Doesn't have to be perfect. You're just making a mold shell, a mother mold shell. So then you take another piece. You measure off what you got left. Double it up. This is not really recommended for uh, a lot of heavy duty stuff. Um, I'm just doing this as a temporary measure right now to just get this thing out of the way and done because like I said I've got so many projects I've been working on tutorial experiments stuff like that just want to make sure I can get this stuff done so lay it along the side run it down it'll 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 grip to it we'll just smooth it out Try to make a nice straight line down the middle. Now if you notice when I did this one, I did do little mold keys on it. Um, and put that in there. Now this was a debacle that I had the other night 
where I was trying to mold the back half with a different product than I used for the front and it didn't turn out so well. Um, the product that I was using was called Liquid Stone and it's like what they make tabletops with. It's a very uh, good, supposedly was supposed to be a good epoxy. What's up, Heath? I see you out of Facebook jail. How's that butthole, buddy? <laughs> I have to ask because you're in Facebook jail. I really don't have to do it all the way down the sides. I do that only because the bandages themselves like to stick to each other, like silicone will stick to silicone, latex will sometimes stick to latex. And then all I do is just take some smaller strips, double them up, and run it around the back of the head. That's just what I call a parting line. Um, to basically show that this is going to come up double, this is going to have a double uh, purpose. That's a middle line that uh, comes up, just double it up, fold it over. Then down here at the bottom, on the back, I will lay over. Whoa, I want to follow my pieces. I will lay over the bandage that is there and just kind of go around the bottom and smooth it out. And what that does is it sticks to the other bandage on top of it. And I just measure by taking this Laying it like this and going, okay, that's about big enough, and do it that way. Some people like to pre-cut their uh, bandages before they do it. So you know, not me. I just, I just, this is just a generic way of me doing it. Now there's a lot of people that do this hobby, that do it professionally, that will tell you, oh, he's doing it wrong, he's doing it, you know, blah, 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 that type of thing. What I'm here to tell you is there are different ways of doing the same thing. Some of them are more economical for those of you that may not have a lot of money, kind of like myself, and there are more advanced ways uh, of doing things that I have a, f a friend of mine that's out in California keeps you know getting on my case about oh you're doing this you're doing that that type of thing and I mean I like to respect the guy but he works in the professional industry of movies and magic and all that stuff I don't I'm working out of my shop you know I'm just doing this as a, you know, kind of a hobby thing that maybe it might build up into a business, I don't know. You know, little business, who knows. Anyway, um, I've got the entire back half done uh, on the bottom. And all I'm doing is like creating a, a, a support shell to hold the form so when I go to put resin in there and slosh cast it around, because again, this is too big a piece to put in the rotocasters, um, I'm going to need support for it. So, there again, just 
just measure it out. If you don't want to double it up, I mean, you can double them up. You can put single layers on there, but if you do a double up, it will be a stronger reinforcement for what you're doing. And since these are hand rotor casted, we we'll have to pick it up, turn it up, do all this mess with it. Um, it is better to have a good support shell, so the texture, the the the, the uh, features in your mold don't get soggy and soft and stuff when you're uh, doing it. There are people that have actually used uh, these for, I wouldn't use these exclusively for latex, trust me. It's not going to be, it's, it, you have to put Ultra Cal with it. This is just a light form. Uh, there is a very light form of Ultra Cal gypsum on these bandages. That's why they bond so well and blend so well with the Ultra Cal when you use them for backup reinforcement. Um, in that, you want to use more than one layer, though. <coughs> I'm going to write down one bandage rule. Now this was a debacle that happened the other night. You guys probably see the video. If you haven't, just let me know and I'll link you to it. But... This is just a, uh, I'm trying to find the placement for this thing. Here we go. Cover the whole thing, give it good reinforcement. Smooth it out. Now I'll turn around and show you this. Entire backside is done and double layer bandages. Um, I've got a area here that this is just a form part of it because it's supposed to be a tabletop bus and uh, it will sit on the table so I haven't done anything so far as making the flange area yet and that's what I want to show you. You don't have to do the flange area as a on the table. You just go like this and take it off of the thing and very carefully on the edges put it right there. And of course got to open up a second set of bandages. I need to dry my hands. The one thing about this is have paper towels on hand before you open a fresh packet of bandages clean your hands off. Because if you touch your bandages and you have wet hands, they become contaminated and the moisture will soak in there and it can kind of harden up. I'm trying to find my daggum towels. I had a roll of towels over here. Hang on just a second. Oh, there they are. Okay. You open a new bag of bandages, always have dry hands. So I still got to lay a couple more bandages over there and just kind of do that and uh, make it a little bit thicker. And that's what I'm going to do with this. Ah! Like I said, the reason I do this, because people don't want to show the work. They just want to say, look what I did. And, and that's it. Not me. I'm going to show you every step I'm doing on these things. From You guys have already seen the photos, so... 
I did the bandage of the damage and all that, uh, the, the, the video of the damage that was done and, and we sculpted it and everything, not sculpted, but we cast, uh, molded it with that uh, plastic paste. That came off good, but the liquid stone didn't, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to remold this in a new form. Just smooth it out. Get it good on all the areas there that just kind of like try to get smooth, strong, uh, solid thing. I'm going to go over it again with one more layer. It's going to be a triple reinforcement, but I don't want to waste the bandages. And like I said, this for some of the things I do is not really a common, common thing I do. It's just a an opportunity to do it as a temporary thing and give you guys a tutorial on how to do it because if you can't really afford it um, you know ultra cal and that type thing bandages will work I don't recommend them on really heavy big like life-size projects small things yes because they do make a good durable lightweight um, mother mold when you got big, heavy-duty projects, don't rely on bandages or plaster by itself. It will not work. That's why you need UltraCal. But you can use these as reinforcement instead of burlap. There again, just double it up, lay it on there. We've done that before. Now you probably wonder what I'm going to end up doing if I do half of the back and it doesn't uh, dries out. What am I going to do for the front? Well, I still haven't found that bottle of jar of Vaseline I had out here. I don't know where that went. So I may have to run in the house real quick and see if I can get something out of there. However, uh, Vaseline is the one thing that you need, or petroleum jelly, or something like that. I do have mold release, but the spray is not going to really work. Because the spray doesn't, you have to spray it real thick. Vaseline, you can rub it on, and you just want to rub about an inch line all the way down to separate the two pieces from sticking to each other. <laughs> I was overlapping the same one, trying to keep a good, precise, straight line, and just doing a double reinforcement there. I just get on there and just mold it. Just rub it on there, just rub it down. It'll stick to it, so you just gotta get the plaster to rub it and stick to it. So I am not over answering questions if anybody's got any, but well, you know what? Got a little problem here. It doesn't want to stick, so I'm going to take it and turn it over. Lay it down. Something I forgot to mention, I will mention now. When you do fold them over the seamed end where it's folded, best to go on the inside. Work with that. Let the loose flappy end be on the outside. Because that's where the weak point in the plaster and the bandage is, is on the loose flappy end. 
The one where the mold is uh, folded over, when the bandage is folded over and you've got that seam line, that's a strong part, so you want to have that strong part on there. Because the more strength you've got on the inside where it counts, the outside's okay. Should be weak. Because nine times out of ten when you do slush casting on resin, you won't get a good flow of resin on the outside. You have to go in with a brush and brush in layers when it's warm or setting up and just try to do that. I just wet my hands a little bit, go back over, see whether there's any, anything wrong, like little lumps or bumps or anything like that. Smooth it out, try to get it as good and smooth to lay down as good as possible. Because if you have anything that's sticking up and it's not laying down, that's going to be weak. I do one more right back here just to make sure that, because I see through that right here, and I'll do a single layer on that one. Won't be a double. So I got a double on there. Like I said, all I'm doing is taking the bandage, dipping it in the water, gently running it down. You're not squeezing it. You're not squeezing the water out. You're letting it run off. And it's only a little bit. You want to leave as much of this on here as you can. So far as the plaster, because if you take the plaster off, it's just a stupid piece of cloth. Doesn't have any strength or anything. So... Okay, now this is going to dry and set up. I'm going to run the house real quick, see if I can find a little thing of Vaseline or something. I know there's some around here somewhere. I could have sworn I brought it out here. So let me put this, I'm going to put this on pause real quick and be right back. Okay, I'm back and I found it. Thank you for sticking with me. Okay. So what we've got here, Vaseline. This is dry enough on the top because I did the first layer correctly. So I'm going to do this on the side and show you guys. Just take a little bit in your fingers and about an inch in all the way down, run a line of Vaseline on it. Just rub Vaseline on there like that, just a little bit. And you just fucking make it thick enough to where you see it about an inch in. Run that about an inch over. There you go, like that. And just run it all the way down. And do it all the way down the, the bandage from where you're going to, about an inch over all the way down. Maybe two. If you want to do two, you can do two. What this does is this creates a good seal to keep the other bandages from locking on to these bandages. So, what you've got you're making a seal where it will not lock on to the other bandages because this stuff dries and where it's not like UltraCal and like really strong solid rock material, this is a cement compound. So in effect it will grip and lock onto it. Like I said, these are the medical grade bandages to make plaster bandages with broken arms with. I just don't have anything broken, so I don't need to really use it as that much. <clears throat> so there again, I'm going to wash off my hands here. And uh, 
going to continue with this. Clean off my hands. Make sure they're dry. Take another one. Now we'll turn it around. We'll do this side. Same as before. I've got maybe one piece I want to put on the back here. One more piece. I'm seeing, I don't like seeing daylight on these things. I don't want to do it too thick because like I said, it's just a light outer shell to hold it. But if you do see texture in between your bandages and you can see the mold underneath, always good to put another layer on there if you can. And that right there is just a single layer, no biggie, just to cover up the daylight, reinforce it a little bit. As long as you've got this smooth and up against the form, it will dry pretty much with no uh, problems. As long as you've got it smooth, if you're pushing it and it's not doing it, it's not sticking, it wants to lump up or it wants to hang off or something, that, uh, that could be an issue, but generally it's not. Smooth that out, just make sure that's nice and smooth and good and cut. Tuck down, just to reinforce the back. Okay, now we'll do the front. And we'll do the front like double sided like we did the back. I'll do a main one right here, a long one. Fold it over, double it up, like that. Cut it. Now, for you guys who are just joining in, this is just a temporary uh, molding solution. This is not a permanent thing that I would do with this. A lot of people want to do fiberglass and all that. You know, I think our small pieces like this are going to be kind of lightweight. Um, I'm not going to do a heavy hollow. Uh, these are going to be hollow castings. They're not heavy duty ones. Now all I do is I lay this where we put the Vaseline down. I just lay it right on top of it about halfway over. Then you got a line that you'll see where you did your Vaseline. You lay this about halfway over. Don't lay it all the way over. Lay it halfway over on that Vaseline line. Reason being is if you lay it all the way over, it's going to lock on there and you'll never get it apart. box down there at my feet just irritating me. Once again, take the folded end first. Bring the folded end up and make the folded end the strong part of this. We'll go about halfway down, all the way down. 
put it right over the top, let it sit and secure and all that stuff. These little bumps you see right here, these are called my mold keys. That's what the silicone is going to lock into, so when I do this thing, if I happen to put it in a rotator or something like that, I don't have to worry about the uh, sleeve slipping in and out. Mold keys are very, very important for securing the mold to the uh, mother mold. You want to get as tight and as smooth as you can to the form because when you put the sleeve back in there and you put uh, the resin in there and you're slushing it around, you don't want the form to get floppy. Because if the form flops or flaps anywhere, you're going to have distorted uh, resin set up and it'll distort the, it'll distort the appearance of your uh, features and stuff of your piece. Gently and easy to just put that down. Put that about halfway up. Stretch it out. Take it and run your fingers along it and just smooth it out. Make sure it gets good and uniformly supple to the uh, form. You got places that have undercuts like a chin or right around here. Uh, be sure you measure accurately for your piece to compensate that it will fit under there and it will work. And it will mold on there correctly. Because if you leave an air bubble under there, that's going to cause problems. Like I said, if you have a lightweight mold, uh, it's going to flop around. It's got a little basic piece right here I'm just going to put on top. Put that right over the top there. Now this is a temporary mold just to get something set up. You do not have to worry about it being that strong. Um, you just want strong enough to be able to go back together and pull apart so you can hold it and it not move around that much. I usually use a bungee cord. A lot of people buy mold straps. I use a bungee cord or I find a strap I've got in here and just tie it off. You don't have to go spending a whole lot of money on materials and stuff. Um, there's a lot of household items at work. I mean Alan Hops is one of the guys I learned a lot of stuff from and BD Mold Supply, those guys online uh, like I said, I spent years, uh, a few years, watching videos when I was driving over the road. I watched them every day, probably about multiple times a day. I mean, it was just, you know, I watched one video, not 20 times in a row, but over and over. You watch, go back and watch it, and you think, okay, I got this, and you know, oh, I don't know about doing this, and then you just kind of get questions. Always, you can always go back over and watch those videos because they do explain a lot. And they show you step by step. But like I said, to avoid confusion and all this diatribe of people saying, oh, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, I'm showing all of my work. Everything I do, molding, casting, you name it. Because I don't want people over there going, oh, this guy's a fake, this guy's a fraud. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. It's too much drama llama bullshit in some of the groups and Facebook in general where people just like to sit behind the little damn keyboards and call out somebody, make fun of them or something like that. And I, you know what? I'm not a kid. I'm over 50 years old and, uh, you know what? 
I don't have time for that childish bullshit. And I'm not saying I'm better than they are or anything like that. I'm just saying I do this for enjoyment. I do this for fun. I like doing it. Um, people like seeing what I do. So it works. All that petty shit that people do on the groups and stuff like that. Kiss my ass. I ain't got time for that shit. I got better things to do. I've got so many damn projects I've got lined up and fucking working on. I've got them things in the house that I'm doing that I'm working on for friends and stuff like that. I really don't want to let them know, let you guys know, because then you're, oh, how are you doing that? Blah, blah, blah. You're not showing me that. Because if I'm doing private commission work for somebody, I'm not going to show you what I'm doing because. You're not paying me to do that. This is just a thing I'm doing here to show you guys because I enjoy doing this. I need to get it done. I want you to see me get it done. And you can do it yourself. Doesn't take much. Just go to the store and Actually, order online if you can. Um, I use uh, a site called Alibaba. It's actually a global uh, site where you can uh, buy things in bulk. Or I will go to a crafting uh, website like... Um, so I can't even remember which one this was, but they have a store in Greensboro that's coming soon. And uh, I think it's Joe's or Jack's or something. It starts with a J and it's like something crafting supplies. And of course, yes, this is pottery, craft, crafting and shit like that and the Hobby Lobby stuff. But I had to make sure that these were medical grade bandages because regular plaster bandages do not work. They're not strong enough. You actually have to have an UltraCal based medical grade bandage to work. Your plaster bandages aren't going to work for making molds like this because when you go to pull them apart, they're going to crumble on you. I have a friend of mine, um, Jonathan Jones. Hey, Jonathan, if you're watching, if you're not, I just gave you a shout out, buddy. That's the autistic guy I was telling you about that I was helping, uh, kind of tutoring online, giving him advice and stuff. He really does spectacular work, but he hasn't really, he's just getting into it. And I feel like it's kind of a thing where... You see somebody with talent and they have a disability, I feel compelled to jump in and try to help them because I have a disability too. Um, I have Asperger's and the hearing loss. So, so I'm kind of like on the scale, off the scale autistic, I guess you could say. But it is, a, it is a disability, and it's, my wife hates it because she says I just bounce all over the place, and I've got like 300 things I'm trying to do at once, and I don't try to focus on something for, you know, five minutes and do it. But I find when I'm out here and i got music on or I'm on live feeds, I can get things done, which is good. It's kind of a form of therapy. So, and whatever you do, do not let people run you down and tell you you're doing it wrong and they have a better way. Do research. Go online. Look at all these videos from different people. Don't just take my word for it. But the guys at Bitty Mold Supply, Alan Hops, 
they all have ways that they do things differently from everybody else. And what I do is I just find a way and I go, okay, I'll try this. If I don't like it or it doesn't feel comfortable, I'll try something else. And uh, see what works. So, you know, like I said, the gentleman that, 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 that tries to help me from California, he's in the movie industry. And he gets kind of like going upset because he says, oh, you should be going to so-and-so and buying these supplies and stuff. I'm like, dude, I don't live in California. I don't have buttloads of money. You know, I've got to find ways that are going to work that I can utilize on a temporary basis. Then if I happen to sell a few pieces or something, um, you know, I'd take that money and buy, buy better supplies with it. But I'm not going to, you know, go out, because that's what I did in the beginning, about three, four years ago when I started getting into this. I just went out and bought supplies. I didn't do anything. I wasn't doing anything. I just buying supplies. And I was going, yeah, I can do this. I can do that. I can, I can use this. And this work and all that. And it was like, my wife was like, you know, we had a bedroom, I had a bedroom stocked up with boxes and stuff. And she was like, when are you going to do this? When are you going to do this? When are you going to do this? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't have time. I'm driving a truck. But I so badly wanted to do it. And then I started to, you know, did the sculpting and stuff like that. And got, a, got sick and was out and just, you know, doing that. Now I'm like officially retired, I think. <clears throat> so, doing that as well. So now I've got more time to come out here daily and just undertake something. And I got people asking me about things like, oh, you're going to do Quint, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Yes. Yes, I have that shit done, okay? Quint is done. Quint from Jaws is done. What I got to do is figure out whether I want to do it in one piece, because it's almost about this big, a little bit smaller, or do I want to do it in two pieces? Because the way I see it, if there's more than one person that wants one, um... I can make orders go out faster with these rotocasters here because I can put a piece in one, put the right amount of resin in there, put a piece in another one, put the resin in there, turn them on, let them go. And they just rip, go boom, and, and spin, do that. Then I go work on something else. And I come back 15 minutes later, take those out, refill them, boom, make more pieces. That's kind of why I got these things, built these things. Uh, they come in kits, and you build them yourself, and I actually put a motor on one. And uh, if you guys want the information, I've got the information for the people that sell these things, about $200. And uh, they come in kits, you can build them yourself. But they do work wonderfully for, like, I got wall hangers I want to do. And I've cut them into different, like, smaller pieces. So what I do is I put the smaller piece in a mold, put it in the rotocaster, turn it on, because they have to be hollow. When you're molding resin, trust me, you want hollow pieces because resin is very heavy. And if you go to hang it on the wall, it's going to stay up there for about three seconds and it's going to pull the nail or screw out and fall and it falls it's likely to crack or break. And that's what I don't want. I want to have somebody pay for something and then turn around and have it fall off a wall five seconds later and break. And notice I didn't double that out because there was already a layer down there. I'm just putting it down there on there singly. Just uniformly make a piece here. And 
I've got something that I'm talking to somebody about that I want to do. But if I'm going to undertake this, the movie's coming out in July. And I'm not going to be able to do much more than outside parts of it. However, once the movie comes out and I get the full picture of it, yes, I will be able to do it. It's one of those things where they're not showing you the face of the character and you're not seeing what it looks like. And uh, you got to kind of go around the details of what he's going to look like and try to figure it out. And I want to get as close as possible, close to it as possible. But, uh, you know, they're not, they're not saying much. Oh, by the way, happy April Fools. I don't know what the hell that's all about, because I don't have any jokes to play on anybody or any bullshit to tell them about. Oh, I'm going to convert from being a Muslim. April Fools. Ha, ha, ha. Nope, fuck off with that shit. I don't play those games. However, I may have been pranked, and it might have come from Jason Blum himself. Because apparently he made a tweet about Friday the 13th where Jason was going to come home, and Blumhouse had acquired a deal behind the scenes with Sean Cunningham and his son about making a new Friday the 13th movie. Now... I saw the date was done yesterday, so I thought, okay, this is legit, and I posted it. You'll see it on my feed. Um, people started going, ah, ha, ha, April Fool's, and I'm like, no, this is real. I think it's real. Um, I actually wrote uh, to Bloomhouse behind the scenes. They sent me a message back, hi James, um, this is not information we will disclose publicly, but as time goes forward, we will reveal it publicly. We do not disclose it privately, I'm sorry. As time moves forward, we will reveal it publicly. So, that let me know, okay, you're not going to tell me privately yes or no, but you say as time moves forward, you'll reveal it to the public. Well, didn't you just kind of tell me that yes, it's going to happen? Um, so that's the answer I got. That's the answer I can give. Um, I don't know, you know, because like I said, studios and shit are just so paranoid about shit nowadays. You guys mm -hmm. aren't seeing any spoilers for Avengers 4 or anything, are you? Nope. So, okay, it looks like we got a good seal on here. I'm going to let this set up, let it dry for a few minutes. Um, I'm going to put a couple more layers on the side. Yeah. Do that just to be sure. And I'm looking over here and I'm going, eh, this kind of doesn't look right. Doesn't look right. Just little short strips down in. Now, the reason I didn't do this in fiberglass is, one, I don't like wearing a mask and being on camera and saying, You can't hear me when I'm wearing that mask. So if I'm trying to tell you or show you how to do stuff, you can't understand what the fuck I'm saying. So what's the point? So... That's why the plaster bandage mold on this one. 
I will likely go back and make a fiberglass mold or a plastic paste mold later. I just want to show you these guys this. I've got tons of bandages, so, you know, me spending about $5 worth of bandages, maybe, to show you guys how to do this, no big deal. It's not an issue for me. Like I said, I'm doing stuff on a commission basis outside the scenes that is paying okay money. So I can have money to go get materials. Which I gotta do with a friend of mine in a couple of days. Hopefully, if he got money. Or if he got the money for it. And then we will do a live video casting on that. If he's okay with being on camera. So, front and back. There's the front of him. Make sure that's on the fucking Vaseline. And here's the back. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to bring you over real close and show you. Here. Yeah. Why are you get on the top of his head? Hang on, let me flip this around. This right here is the parting line. That's where I laid that Vaseline down all the way down and did that. So when this sets up and it dries solidly, which we'll probably do in about an hour, I can come out, take a little screwdriver, pop it up in there, boop, a couple of points, and it'll pop off. A plaster bandage mold, you do not have to make pry points. That's why you put the Vaseline down. Okay? I've got them all nice and molded over with the double and triple layer side all over this thing. See how smooth that is? There's a little bit under the chin, but smooth enough that uh, Topher, did you just jump in? Right here. There is about a two, three inch lay, uh, layer of Vaseline, okay? You lay down the back part, you rub about a three, three fingers of Vaseline down the middle here, and then you lay these bandages about halfway over. You can still see the Vaseline here. You lay the bandage about halfway over the Vaseline track all the way down. Okay, you see the part. All right. So that's what I'm saying is you just do that and you see the parting line right here. And it's actually helping me a little bit because there's a part where it's coming off. I'm going to lay a couple of more bandages right there real quick. So that's one piece that I showed you that I saw that, okay, I need a couple more bandages. Or at least one more. By the way, Topher, I did not mention your name in that video that I did when I destroyed that resin thing I made. Uh, but yes, it was you. So if anybody asks, I did not mention your name. I didn't know if you would be happy or not with that. And I didn't really want to say anything more than the guy that made the Jason mask, or the Ghost Jason mask. Because as you know, you and I were kind of going around with that, and you beat me to that, buddy. And you did a hell of a job, I'll tell you that. You did beat me to that. And I'm not bitter, upset, or angry about any of that bullshit. I've got other stuff I can do. I just happen to be a fan and want to do stuff just to say, hey, I'm a fan. Ah, okay. So now it doesn't want to lay down. Well, guess what? You're going to lay down. Or you're going to sleep with the fishes, one of the two. Uh, 
Aha! I know why I didn't want to lay down. The Vaseline's keeping it from doing that. So I will take that, fold it back over itself a little bit. I've got a piece that wants to kind of go floppy on the other side because the Vaseline won't let it adhere. So, that's pretty much it. Uh, We're just going to see how that turns out. There we go. That is pretty much it. I've got to let this dry for a little bit, for a couple hours. So I'm not going to keep you guys out here and do this for a couple hours. So... All right, cool. All right, well, I will uh, go back inside and get on Facebook and answer the questions you guys put up here. So, I appreciate it. We'll see you.